June of 1938, we are taking a closer look at some of the operational things. After the redesign, we realized that we've made a lot of profit. We have a pretty good cash flow, even though we're to the point now with the majority of the redesigns, we have tapped into our cash flow, but we're still producing a considerable amount of vehicles and we wanted to take a closer look at Emerson a point sports car and that vehicle is currently our leading seller in the sports car market that vehicle is a front wheel drive four cylinder when we look back at the parts and warranty information on the Emerson a point sports car we see that there could be some improvements we have some warranty expenses especially with the current models extended model year from 1937 to 1938 those vehicles even though we've sold more of them it is actually costing us a little bit of money in warranty expenses so we're going to improve some of the quality of that vehicle and even though it is our mass seller we still want to make sure that it's not costing us and costing our customers a lot of money so it's actually made it to the second page of the all-time sales up until 1937. We sold more of those vehicles in 1929 at 28,396. And that was for the automatic version for 1929 but the 1937 through 1938 model we sold a total of 21,310 and that was in the manual and then we're just selling 14,720 for the automatic version so we're selling a considerable amount of those sports cars so we want to take a closer look at just how we're putting it together because we're currently going to skip the 1939 model year and just concentrate on this model so that therefore we can do some improvements. So as far as the 1937 to 1938 model, currently have a Eco EM 2300, 56 horsepower and 65 foot-pounds of torque. The acceleration is about 27.7 seconds for the automatic version and 29.8 for the manual version. So we're going to design the automatic first. So the vehicles range somewhere right around about just under 2,000 pounds for the automatic and for the manual. And the manual is about five or six pounds lighter than the automatic. So the last model was an open top sports car. So the new vehicle is going to go from 1,990 pounds to 2,048 pounds. The cargo capacity is roughly about the same at 22 cubic feet in power 56 horsepower 65 foot-pounds of torque the fuel economy has decreased some 32.6 down to 29.8 the top speed has decreased from 89 miles per hour down to 86 and the acceleration has decreased from 27.7 to 28.3 and we're dealing with a vehicle that's more in line with its compact status. A total of 139.7 inches long, 69 inches wide, and about 61 inches high. 
So we're going to give the manual version of it higher output engine, which is about 60 horsepower. So the manual transmission is going to be more expensive than the automatic transmission. So the manual is going to be lighter. It's going to be 1,968 pounds as opposed to the automatic, which is 2,048 pounds. There's going to be a difference in fuel consumption. The manual's fuel consumption is 38.5 miles per gallon as opposed to the automatic, which is 29.8. Both have the same cubic feet and they can seat up to two people comfortably. Top speed of the manual is 88 miles per hour as opposed to 86 miles per hour for the automatic. And then we're going to make in a, a point 71 model so it's not going to have the C package but it's going to be a manual transmission it's only going to have 50 horsepower and 64 foot-pounds of torque and that vehicle is going to weigh roughly about 2034 pounds and it's going to have an acceleration of 32.8 nine seconds zero to 60 and a top speed of 80 miles per hour so for the 1940 model year we're doing the redesign of the etd hogback r ep edition and of course this vehicle is based upon the hogback by etd pretty much this caters to the 35 to 55 year old person who wants to have a little bit of a different type of truck now this vehicle is pretty expensive for us to make it has an e-performance engine which is a 3.6 version of the Titan motor. E Performance has tweaked it and turbocharged it to bring the horsepower above 119. To be exact, has a total of 171 horsepower, 190 foot-pounds of torque. The fuel economy is about 15.6 miles per gallon. This truck has an acceleration of 13.6 seconds zero to 60. So how does this vehicle compare to the standard version? So it's giving you an acceleration of about 10 seconds quicker to 60 than the standard version with 119 horsepower and 100. 48 foot-pounds of torque. The Hogback R is an all-wheel drive variant. It's on a special platform lightweight to achieve a very trim 3,231 pounds compared to the standard version 3,686 pounds. Now this vehicle is a speed rated for about 79 miles per hour as the top speed as opposed to the 81 in the standard version. You have upgraded tires and you have an optional spare tire on the rear. Now this vehicle is over 81 inches wide which means that the federal government has mandated that this truck while being sold in the United States has to have marker lights. So that's one distinct difference between the standard version of the Hogback and the e-performance version of the Hogback R, which isn't that much of a problem in the United States, but when we're selling this vehicle overseas, like in Europe, then it could pose a problem, but we're going to check our sales reports to see what the sale of this vehicle is like. So currently in London, we sell about 13. This is for the 1930 ATD Trail, which is the last generation. We sell one in Germany. We sell six in Australia. We sell seven in Canada. Now in the United States, Atlanta, we sell about three. Baltimore, we sell about nine. Boston, we sell 10. Buffalo, we sell about six. Charlotte, we sell about three. Chicago, where it's manufactured at. Cincinnati, we sell about six. Cleveland, we sell about nine. Columbus, about four. 
Dallas about five. Denver is about three. Detroit, we sell about seven. Houston, we sell about four. Indianapolis, we sell about five. Jacksonville, only two. Kansas City, we sell four. Los Angeles, we sell about 12. Louisville, we sell about three. Memphis, Tennessee, we sell about three. Miami, Florida, we sell about two. Milwaukee, we sell about three. Minneapolis, we sell about three. Montgomery, we sell about one. In New Orleans, we sell about five. And our next major selling areas are New York and Philadelphia, pumping out about 360 units per month. So while we're concentrating on our performance vehicle cars, we wanted to take a closer look at Emerson Performance. It was established as our race division of the company back in 1900. And over the course of years, we have moved to the middle of the plan route for this division. Many of our customers have purchased the performance branded vehicles, increasing the demand. This may sound good, but it has diluted the focus of the marquee from a niche racing market to vehicles that are more common. For example, we started selling three different sports cars, a touring car, two different compact cars, two different mid-sized sedans, a sports coupe, and a truck for a total of 184 models built to date. Now, these vehicles have increased the revenue of the company, but we wanted to concentrate more on the quality of the vehicles sold as opposed to the quantity. Interesting enough, at the price premium and primarily because of the work that is put into the Emerson Performance branded vehicles, there has been an, a large influx of the Hogback Performance truck. But as far as some of the other vehicles, we wanted to push somewhere around about anywhere from 200 to 500 units for these vehicles every month. 